My name is uh, Mark Diggins. I'm the coordinator of the Scottish Avalanche Information Service. And today I'm just going to explain a little bit about how to interpret the Avalanche Hazard Reports. The Avalanche Hazard Reports really has two elements. There is the observed and there is the forecast. And they're two very, very different things, and especially in terms of accuracy. The observed avalanche hazard is obviously something that we, when the forecasters, when they go out into the field, that they're pretty certain of and they're, in their traveling, in their observations and looking at snow st pack stability and its distribution in the landscape, they're pretty certain of where instabilities and stabilities are. The forecast is quite different. The, the avalanche forecast is dependent pretty much on the weather forecast and we can't be, uh, that's into the future, that's tomorrow, so we can't be 100% certain that it's going to be accurate. So therefore, when you're out in the field yourselves, you really do need to make observations and to be sure that what is said in the report is actually happening. So looking at the weather, looking at the wind, how, that's being how the snow is being distributed is, a very, is, uh, is very important. Okay, so what we have up here now is the, um, the main page, which you get on, online and we have the avalanche forecast which is um, prominent right now and there are three different sections really. Um, one of the elements that we have in the forecast that we see here is the compass rose um, and the rose is just a, a basic um, illustration of the, of the hazard um, and it, it, it sort of shows the distribution of the hazard according to aspect and also according to height. And the heights can vary on the compass rows. Usually the centre uh, height is the highest point in the region. So it could be the summit of say Ben Nevis or in this case it could be um, in the northern Cairngorms it'll be um, Bray Rick or something like that. The other altitudes vary. The outer one is according to where the snow starts, the snow line is and then the one in the middle is the transition between hazards. So it may be that it's in, and in this case on northerly aspects, above 500 meters, they have a considerable hazard. Then as we approach 900, that then changes and is an indeed high hazard above 900 meters. The, um, the thing that's very important to take on board is that these um, aspects here are according to, are relevant to the prevailing winds. These aspects, um, it's about slope aspect rather than the side of a mountain. So for instance, um, a, a corrie that generally faces north can have many aspects in it. And so that's, that's quite important. So that when you're going into, into a corrie or into a mountain region, you need to be looking around you. Because it's not just that you're going to be faced with the northerly aspects, you could be faced with every aspect that is on the compass rose, if you like. Okay, the other element in the in the reports, um, the interface that you can that you're looking at online, is the the hazard level and the avalanche probability. And here we we have the different levels, hazard levels. We've got low, moderate, considerable, high, and it's very very important to um, have a clear understanding of what those different levels mean, and what the impact is on yourself or your party. So, for instance. Um, in low, you've got natural avalanches unlikely. Uh, human, triggered aval uh, human triggered avalanches are not likely. Then when we get into the moderate level of hazard, um, at that level, natural avalanches are unlikely, but human triggered avalanches are possible. And that is because when we get into that level of hazard, we tend to end up with fairly isolated um, places where the avalanche hazard or the, the snow is unstable and this may be high up in corries, um, in steep places and maybe in convexities. So um, it's isolated, it may be in pockets, but there is still unstable. And that's why if you go to that place with yourself uh, and a group, then, the ch then there it, is a, it can have serious consequences. Okay, the next level of hazard is considerable and um, that is a much more serious level. Uh, it's quite challenging for people that are responsible or you're taking groups into the mountains because um, the considerable level of hazard is pretty much, um, it's that hazard level for a long, long period of the winter. 
usually around 60% of the days or thereabouts, it's, um, it's um, a considerable level of hazard. So the challenge really is, is how we um, manage ourselves during that period. And it's very easy to get used, used to that level of hazard or maybe complacent, but the most important thing is actually to be very alert to what's going on and to be continually making observations um, and, and having in mind that it is a considerable level of hazard. Okay, well what we've come, come to now is the current um, avalanche report and as you can see it's pretty much low on all aspects at, and in, at, at all levels. But really this is to illustrate the other, other um, information you can get in the avalanche report. The most, uh, the, the, the most obvious thing or the key thing that we have at the bottom is key snow stability observations. And these key snow stability observations pretty much identify um, the key hazard levels, if you like. So any hazard level that we have, any observation that we make in the mountains can be pretty much fitted into these symbols or into these icons. Okay, so the key snow stability observations are at the bottom and you can, there, you can get a description of what these icons mean if you, you click on the um, highlighted text at the bottom. And uh, you'll see we have five different icons. And uh, the one with the top with the sort of wavy lines is clear in that weakness is developing in the snowpack due to wind transportation of snow and this really forms wind slab. Uh, the next level is weaknesses within the snowpack and this really is quite key because that highlights any persistent weak layers. So it may not be very obvious when you're walking around and looking at the snowpack or looking at the, looking at the mountains, but actually there may well be something developing underneath the surface and this is a key one to identify. The next is um, the block with surface grain type that may present snowpack instability with subsequent snowfalls. And again this is quite key because this depends on your observations on a day-to-day -day basis. So this could be a, a surface grain which could be surface hoar or graupel which may be lying on the surface and is of no consequence now but if we get snow on top of that then that will produce a very weak layer. The next one down here is a wet snowpack wet snow instabilities due to warm temperatures and really the thing that we're most concerned about or we're most alert to is when we get rainfall right at summit levels because rain at summit levels really saturates the snowpack and we're going to get periods of quite pronounced instability. And the final icon is uh, cornices and corn cornices that may present a trigger uh, due to collapse they will obviously initiate an avalanche hazard um, and that's really something that we are um, we highlight also in those icons. Okay, the observed avalanche hazard is, um, is very, very good information, it's something that's overlooked, but actually that is the most accurate information that you can get from the forecasters, the avalanche forecasters that are out in the field. And again, that will describe you know, what the winds were doing, um, where the freezing level was and what the precipitation was. So it's very clear and accurate. It will also describe um, what the actual situation was in terms of av um, avalanche, um, avalanche hazard and snowpack stability. It will also describe you know, what the observed mountain travel conditions were. Um, and it'll also put in some comments there about what information we've had from the weather forecast in terms of what the prognosis is for the next few days.